Hi everyone, it is July 8th, 2015. I have been in prayer for a couple of days asking the Lord how to even present what I want to speak forth because I have had like a righteous anger about me again about what I'm seeing going on here. And as I was in prayer, I was like, well, Lord, I don't want to come across mean. I don't want to come across brutal. I don't want to come across, you know, where people are going to think I'm being judgmental. I don't want to do, you know, I'm going on and on with God. And I clearly heard in my spirit that were my apostles, when they preached the word, did they sugarcoat it? Did they not get angry? Did Jesus not get angry when he saw a wrong? Lately what I've been seeing is we no longer need to go to the television to see the uh, mega preachers and the, uh, you know, televangelists that's, you know, asking for your money and all sorts of things. It's right here on YouTube. It is right here on YouTube. And once again, what I'm seeing over and over again, which we've gone through this for the last couple of years, at least that I know of, I'm sure it's been longer on YouTube, but it was brought to my awareness two, two and a half years ago. You know, setting dates, setting dates for the rapture again. And I have to speak this up because I know, I know that I know that babes in Christ are watching these videos. I know that people that are just getting saved, coming into the kingdom of God and trying to learn scriptures, trying to learn the way, trying to even to learn how to pray, are coming across men that are quote unquote leaders in the church and they're speaking forth dates. And I've heard from a few of them that, um, you know, they'll be very shocked, very amazed because everything is so lined up that, it, you know, the church is not going to be here come September, October of this year. That the rapture is going to happen. No doubt about it. They don't bring forth any scriptures when they speak forth these things. They just say it. They look at the world. They look at the signs. They look at what's going on instead of looking at the Word of God and finding their answers there. And they're going off feelings. That's all they're going off is emotions. But they don't understand the consequence that it, it goes on to other people. Either people that are, you know, not mature enough in the Lord, they adhere to those words. A lot of times, it, for like babes in Christ, that have have written me and said, "I'm scared. I just got saved. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know if I if I'm going to be qualified to even be in the rapture because it's coming up so fast. I, I don't even understand the Bible because I'm being told I can only read the King James Bible and I don't understand a word that's coming out of there. And it's like, I don't understand why people are so bent on saying, only read the King James. There are other, you know, there are other translations out there that are beneficial for everyone to understand. You know, many years ago when I got saved, I didn't read the King James. I didn't understand one word coming out of that Bible translation. So I read other Bible translations, and as I grew and grew in my walk... Then I started reading into the King James, and even to this day, I read the King James and I read other translations so that I can make sense of what I'm reading. God has blessed us with other translations so that we can have that understanding. So to tell someone, don't read other translations, only read this, and they have no clue of what they're reading, that's not good counsel. And that's just my opinion. But, you know, as I was reading the word, as I was trying to put this together, and this is a very informal video, because it's something just laid on my heart, that we need to stop with the false date setting. There's a woman out there, and I'm not going to say her name, but I'm sure all of you know who I'm talking about, that has set the rapture date every year. She changes her website to the new rapture date, because, oh, she got new information. 
People know for years this woman has been wrong. Totally wrong. On everything. But now, you know, she's even getting even more popular because she did a book. And now everyone's saying, oh, when people call her out and say, isn't this like the fourth time? You have other people coming behind going, oh, don't talk to her like that. She truly is a prophet from God. No, she isn't. No, she is not. People such like this are not true prophet, prophets from God. When someone comes up and says, I received a word, I had a vision, I had a dream, whatever the case may be, and they place a time stamp, they place a time frame, they give out a date, and said, this is what God spoke to me to tell you, and that date comes and goes, that person is a false prophet. End of discussion. God did not call them. But you see, on YouTube, their followers will get up and go, Oh, it's okay. It's okay. You'll get it. You know, you got half of it right. Or maybe it means next year. God's not a liar. God is not going to lie. And a lot of times, these people get away with what they're saying because people don't catch it or they haven't, you know, said anything and they don't call them out. Or, you know, when they do call them out, they just delete their comments and block them and so forth. But they're not into accountability. And we have to realize something, guys, that what we're listening to, if it does not line up with the Word of God, so if they, if they put forth a date, the date comes and goes, they're false, and they need to be held into account, not only for the body of Christ, but for themselves. They have to repent for what they've done. So it's like a double fold here. We're not only coming in as protection to the body of Christ, calling that person into account for their error, but also for them, the person that spoke this out, so that they can come into repentance unto God for their own souls. It's an act of love when we do these type of things. And you will know that person by the fruits that they bear and how they react to you. And I'm going to get into that in the scripture. Let's go there. I'm going to run through a few scriptures here. And for time's sake, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I like to read all of scripture when I go to it because you know, when it was being scribed out, written out that you know they didn't have Matthew chapter 7 you know it was written out without these verse numbers and people I feel just take bits and pieces oh let's just go with this line and that's it and they're not looking at the total context of how it was written to us so let's just start here in 15 this is Jesus Christ speaking beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing come to you as Christians but inwardly they are ravening ravening wolves ye shall know them by their fruits do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit so we know right here I saw a teaching the other day that only only good fruit comes out of a tree if, if it's bad fruit or a bad tree, they said, there will be no fruit. Well, that goes against the word of God, because as we see right here, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt, bad tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So both trees are bearing fruit. We just need to discern, are they good or are they evil? And so we go on, and a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a, oh, I just read that, right? No, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not good forth good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name 
done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity, evil. Whereby, wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. How do we know them by their fruits? What are the fruits? The fruits are their actions. We see the, 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 the lust of the flesh written, and we see the fruit of the spirit. So we know them by how they react to us. We know them by what they do. We know them by how they act. We know them by what they teach. If they're teaching a false doctrine that's not lined up with the scriptures, then we know they're in sheep's clothing. We know them by their fruits. And let's move on to, and I'm going to give you an example. It just dropped into my spirit. I believe it's an Acts. Let me find it. Here in Acts 17, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, here's where Paul came into, you know, they came to Thessalon Thessalonica, where it was a synagogue of Jews. And as we go down here, for time's sake, talking about how they, you know, how he was, uh, Paul was going about teaching and speaking three Sabbath days, which means three weeks, reason with them out of the scriptures, here with the synagogue of the Jews, and so forth, and then, you know, a big riot broke out, and they went into Jason's house, and what have you, because they didn't like what they were hearing. But here, as they went on preaching, verse 11, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. What things? The things Paul was teaching. The things Paul was preaching about. Paul was preaching about Jesus, what he taught, and what Jesus taught, what Jesus preached. He was reciting Old Testament scriptures. Go back and forth, you will see him reciting the Old Testament because he was the fulfillment of what the old prophets were speaking of, of what was to come. So he was saying that he was the fulfillment of what the Old Testament was proclaiming, the prophets. So even them, they were searching the scriptures daily to make sure Paul was right to make sure what Paul was speaking into their lives was correct. Because they didn't have the whole New Testament and Old Testament like we do today, the canon. They had to search the scriptures to make sure Paul was on the, you know, the down low here. So let me go on. We all know 2 Timothy 4 where it says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. I saw this too. Someone was saying about in season, out of season, meaning, you know, times of judgment, times of, of, of peace. And so they're teaching weird things when what this means is in season, out of season, when it's convenient, when it's not convenient for you. We're to preach the word constantly. It doesn't matter how we feel. We're to crucify the flesh. Bear our cross daily. Pick up our cross daily. Crucify the flesh. Crucify the feelings. Crucify ourselves. It's not about us. It's all about Jesus Christ. We are to get out there and preach the gospel. And reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Doctrine is the word of God. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Those that are going around prophesying lies. Those that are going around teaching false doctrines that are not lined up with the Word of God. We have to study the Word of God in order that when we hear things that people are preaching, we go to the Word and we look for it for ourselves and go, okay, yeah, that lines up with what God's Word says. If we hear something that's not lining up and we go to the scriptures and go, okay, wait a minute, that's not in scriptures. Why are they speaking that? You either bring them into correction or you depart from them and not listen to their fables. 
and they will turn away their ears from the truth. What is the truth? God's word. And shall be turned unto fables, myths, stories. go on to another scripture real quick here as I noted before about the Old Testament was false prophets and then as we move into the New Testament we see that it's converged uh, it, it trans it, the transition goes into teachers and you can see it right here in 2nd Peter 2 where it says but there were false prophets among also among the people God's people even as there shall be false teachers among you the word says it clearly, who privily shall bring in damnable her heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Right there, again, this is the reason why when we're hearing something that's incorrect or someone speaks out a false prophecy, puts that time stamp on it, comes and goes, we are to bring in that correction. Why? Because what they're doing is bringing upon themselves swift destruction. We have to walk in love. That love sometimes has to be tough love. It has to be like, hey, you erred here. You need to repent. Otherwise, your soul is in danger. There are just countless, countless scriptures everywhere talking about Beware, beware, do not be deceived, on and on and on. That, that Jesus was speaking about, that the apostles were speaking about, because we have to be on alert. On alert that we are making sure what we are hearing is truly coming from God. And for time's sake again, in Romans, I'll leave all these below. Romans 16, verses 1 through 27. Here, Paul comes in and he's like, I commend, I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister, and goes on and on, and he's giving greetings, right? Greetings, greetings, greetings. Then he goes right into, after he salutes and greets, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Avoid them. Meaning, mark them, bring them into accountability, if they do not come into repentance, which then therefore they're going to bring in divisions and offenses because they're going to come right back at you, you are to avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by, our, by good works and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. The hearts of the simple. Could it be talking about the babes in Christ? That's what I instantly think of. People that are mature in their walks, people that, you know, the brothers and sisters that know scriptures very well, that have been saved for a long time, we're supposed to be on the lookout for those babes, for those ones that are just coming into the fold, that are just learning, that are just, you know, it's almost like they're in that honeymoon stage where, you know, they just got saved and they're in that euphoria of, wow, I didn't know Jesus Christ loved me so much. But they have to get right into the Word of God so they can stay walking with the Lord and not fall away. Not fall away. Fall away to these teachers and these prophets out here that are teaching lies. And when their prophecies come and go and they're failed, but these people have been hanging on to these prophets like, okay, okay, this is going to happen. And they fail and they're sitting there going, well, what is this about? And this continually happens over and over again. This is one of the reasons why people fall away from the faith because they're looking at Christians going, they're liars. God's a liar. God said, they said God spoke this and it didn't come to pass. Why? And they come up with excuses. Oh, it must be our prayers. Go back and read in the Old Testament. When God said something, he did it. There's no excuses anymore. This takes me right into Galatians uh, 1. If we read down here for time's sake. Verse 10. 
For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Who do we please? Who do you please? Are you listening to someone because you like their personality, you've met them in person, and they're just an all-around good guy or good gal, so you don't want to hurt their feelings when they're wrong? Or are you just, you know, drawn into the dreams, the visions, the prophecies, the signs, the signs that Jesus talked about of an adulterous generation that seek after the signs? Or, or are you a good steward? Of the Bible of the Word of God do you seek every single day what can I do for you God or are you one to say God what can you do for me God I need this I need that I'm in trouble here I'm in trouble there we should be waking up in the morning saying God dear God what can I do for you today because you've done so much for me. And he has. He sent his one and only begotten son to die on a tree and shed his precious blood for you, for me, for all. All mankind. So that we all can have eternal life with him. Wasn't, isn't that enough? Isn't the blood enough? Why do we seek so much more? Ask yourself, why am I seeking more? Why do I got to chase after the dreamers? Why do I got to know a prophecy? Why can't I just look in the Word of God? The Word of God tells us what's going to go down. Why do I have to listen to man? That's why a lot of people stepped out of the mainstream churchianity, you know, the mainstream churches, because they weren't being fed the Word of God. They weren't being fed the truth. And now we have internet churchianity. The mega preachers on YouTube that are repeating the same things. They are YouTube televangelists. And it's sad. Because we live in a day right now where it's instant tech and techni you know, technology. We, listen, we live in a time where I know what's going on in other parts of the world. Instantly. Through an app. So people are coming onto the internet seeking God. And what are they being fed? Are they being fed the truth or are they being fed your own vain imaginations? Because that's what it's coming down to. Instead of being up on YouTube all the time, there are people out on the street that need you. The fields are full of people that are lost, people that are hungry, both in the spirit and in the physical. But yet we got YouTube preachers coming up saying, I, I can't pay my electric bill. I need your help. Well, they're living in a nice house, they're driving a nice car, they have food in their refrigerator and everything else. They're coming up asking for themselves. Well, we have starving people in this world. We have children that are hungry. We have single mothers that are struggling. Are struggling bad. We have the elderly that have to sit there and count their coins because they need medication in order to live. Because they have heart problems, diabetes problems, whatever. So they're counting their pennies because they need to also eat. And they barely have enough money to, to eat food. We have our youth out here that are struggling because all they want to do is have an education. But they can't, they can't go to school. 
They can't go to college. Because it costs too much. I can go on and on and on of the things that are in need in this world. You guys know it. But instead, I see so many just want to stay on YouTube. And what really gets my goat is when I, <laughs> when I hear them say, you know what? I preached it, I preached it, I said whatever I had to say, and they're not listening to me, so whatever. I'm going to be raptured, they're going to be left behind, and then they'll know. You better be careful of what you say. You really, really need to be careful of what you say, because God hears and knows all things. Do you think he's pleased with that type of language? No. No. He calls us to get out there. And be his hands, his feet, his mouthpiece, his body. To preach the word of God and help those in need. I ask you to pray about this. Pray about what you're listening to. Pray about what you're soaking into your minds and your spirits and your hearts. Are you tangled up with all these dreams and visions? Or are you immersed into the Word of God and in prayer? Where is most of your time being spent? I thank you all for listening. I love you all and God bless you.